Hi there, good morning and welcome. You're watching Chart Busters. I'm Mangla Malu. With me is Reema Tendulkar. Reema, rip roaring rally. That's the only way we can put it. The Nifty higher again in today's trading session at the highest point of trade, closing in on that 11,300 mark. And remember, we started this month with the Nifty just shy of 10,800, 10,792, if one must. So, in just the last few trading sessions in March, the bulls have marched forth 475 points on the Nifty. Add 25 more and you have 500 points on the Nifty. Can't even talk about the mid caps and the Sensex, which have done fairly well. Sensex obviously in terms of absolute data points, but the mid cap index has done more than three times what the Nifty has done this month. Absolutely, and look at leadership which is coming through in names like Larson and Tubro and ICICI Bank, Reliance Industries. In fact, I can't take my eye off the bank Nifty. Uh, the Nifty Bank is actually just 0.3% away from its uh, lifetime high, which stands at a level of 28,388, which means just about 88 points away from that level. Um, so that's going to be uh, perhaps an important milestone which we could cross, if not today, then uh, in the next few days. So keep your eye out on that. But as we Peak up close to about 1%, the upward momentum very, very much intact. Let's take a look at the other top headlines that we're tracking at this hour. Um, first on the markets then, a very strong day of trade. The markets hit another high for 2019, buoyed by robust FII flows. In the last four sessions, the FIs buy $1 billion in the cash market. The mid-caps trade in line. Jet Airways in the green, the outcome of Etihad, board, uh, Etihad Airways board meeting is awaited. Banking sources tell CNBC TV18 that Etihad Airways to infuse Rs 1,600 to 1,900 crore rupees in Jet Airways to keep their stake at 24.5%. Also, the NIIF backed by Abu Dhabi Investment Authority may pick up 19.5% stake. HDFC Standard Life slips, Standard Life launches an offer for sale to sell nearly 10 crore shares at a price of 357 rupees per share. This is at an 8% discount to the current market price. Bharti Infratel under pressure as Bharti Airtel transfers 32% stake in the company to its wholly owned subsidiary, Nettel Infra, at around 290 rupees per share. GMDC surges in trades as Edelweiss initiates coverage with a buy rating, sees imminent volume uptake post the production ramp up at New Mine, add that the stock is trading at the lowest end of its eight year valuation multiple on an EV to EBITDA basis. Right, before we go to Rajat for a technical check, just keep an eye out on some commentary coming in from Jet Airways. They say that they have five uh, 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 Boeing 737 MAX 8s in their fleet, but they're not flying any of those. Remember, the other aviation player in India or the other airline player in India who has uh, uh, the Boeing 737 MAX 8s is SpiceJet. They have around 12 to 13 of those planes in their fleet. So we'll have to await their commentary coming in as well. In terms of uh, why this is important is because over the last five months, there have been two air crashes and both the planes, both the crashes involved the Boeing Air uh, 737 MAX 8. So as a result of that, the com uh, countries like China, Indonesia, Ethiopia, South Korea and Mongolia have grounded these jets, while the countries which are still flying these jets, we have US, Russia, Dubai, Turkey, Italy, India, Oman and Iceland. And as far as India is concerned, two of those players, Jet and SpiceJet, we haven't heard from SpiceJet yet, but Jet Airways, who have five of those planes in their fleet, have, uh, uh, have, uh, are not flying that those planes yet, and they are in touch with Boeing with regards to the security issues on that plane. We'll keep an eye out on this story, but as far as the market's con concerned, it's taking our breath away, closing in on the 11,300 mark. Rajat, what's your view on uh, the frontline indices, the mid-cap index, and your stock picks? See, regarding the frontline indices, I would say that since the uh, Nifty has already crossed 11,250, now the next target would be 11,340, 45 to about 11,365. Above that, 11,404. And regarding the bank Nifty, I would say that today you might see an all-time high. Uh, there is a possibility that bank Nifty might actually go beyond 28,400. Of course, the PSU banks are still in the show, but uh, definitely Axis, ICICI, they are also doing well, HDFC Bank chipping in. So overall, it's, it's, it's uh, really a vibrant bull market. And uh, one thing I would like to highlight is that the mid-caps are rallying and uh, that strong rally is continuing. 265 stocks out of NSE 500 
that that are up by one percent, and about ten stocks are only down by one percent in that indices. So you can uh, you can guess what what kind of strength this rally has, and I suppose that mid cap is going to continue rallying uh, during this election period. Okay, so strength to continue. What would you recommend, Rajat, by way of trade? Well, uh, I would recommend three stocks, one bank stocks and two real estate, sto uh, real estate stocks. And out of that, uh, both the real estate stocks, I hold personally some shares of them in my portfolio. Axis Bank to start with. Uh, it's a buy recommendation with a stop below 739.90, 753 and 757 are the two targets and I'm expecting access to continue rallying. It can even get past uh, 800 in this current upswing. And DLF, stop below 182.75. A target would be 189 and 193. I'm expecting these targets, at least the first target to be met uh, today itself. India Bulls Real Estate, uh, 81.50 is my stop loss, 86.50 and 88.90 are the two targets for India Bulls Real Estate. As I said, these two real estate stocks I personally hold in my portfolio. All right, Raja, thanks a lot for that. Uh, can't take your eye away from the market at the high point of the day yet again for all the indices. Right from the word go, the market's been moving higher. But one stock which is moving higher is Jet Airways. As we await the outcome of the Etihad Airways board meeting, banking sources tell CNBC TV18 that Etihad is preparing a fresh round of fund infusion. Ritu, what are these proposals that are being discussed and is the outcome anytime uh, in the near future? Well, Naresh Goel certainly hopes so. He recently wrote to Tony Douglas saying the need of the hour is, you know, 750 crores by next week. That is something that he's seeking from Etihad Airways. But what we've been able to confirm so far is, uh, you know, the provisions of the bank-led uh, resolution or revival plan that is currently being discussed. Under this plan, Etihad seeks to cap its shareholding at about 24.5% so as to not cross that 25% threshold so it does not have to make the open offer, which now SEBI has made very clear. Uh, there will be no exemptions granted to anyone outside of NCLT, uh, barring lenders, of course. Under this plan, Etihad Airways is proposed to infuse about, uh, you know, is um, uh, expected to infuse, rather, about 1,600 to 1,900 crore rupees. A similar amount is expected to be infused by a new partner that is coming in, as we had reported, NIIF, which will be backed by Ardia, which is, uh, you know, the Abu Dhabi Investment Fund. Uh, they will also invest a similar amount to pick up 19.5% stake. In addition, Naresh Goel will bring in another 450 crore rupees Remember, he's already brought in 250 crores as interim funding, which will take his entire infusion at about 700 crore rupees. And his stake will also fall to below 20%. And he'll have no board control whatsoever, as we had reported earlier. It is possible that his son, Nivan Goyal, is given an executive position. That is something that is still being discussed. Uh, lenders, as we had reported, will convert about 1,000 crore rupees of debt, which will then be removed from the company's books as unsustainable debt and will be converted into investment instruments, after which lenders will control about about 30%. Now, this is what the bank-led resolution provisional plan is. Etihad, board, uh, held a, uh, Etihad held a board meeting yesterday, the outcome of which is still awaited, which will tell us exactly what quantum of funds Etihad is willing to invest at this point of time. Thank you, uh, Ritu, for that. As we pointed out earlier, keep your eye out on the Nifty Bank. Now, it has closed its all-time closing high, which was a level of 28,320. Uh, so 28,320 was the all-time closing high, which the Nifty Bank has surpassed in today's trade. The next level to track will be 28,388, the all-time high. And as our ticker team is alerting, we're just about 70 points away uh, you know, from that level. So in striking di distance, absolutely. And the two big movers in the banking space, one is ICICI Bank. In fact, that's had a stellar run. It's rallied 10% so far this month. And the other one is Axis Bank, also higher by close to about. To odd percent, and of course, you've got though that HDFC bank uh, that continues to always provide the leadership for the banking space. And you want to add something? Uh, absolutely, you know, and it's not just this month. If you take a look at the last 12 months, it's ICICI Bank and Axis Bank which have start, which have outperformed the Nifty Bank. In fact, over the last 12 months, ICICI Bank is high by almost 30 percent, while Axis Bank is high by about 40, 45 percent. So, corporate lenders doing fairly well. In fact, from its 52-week lows, ICICI Bank is higher by about 50. 1%. With that, what we do is we simply on a short break, come back, we focus on the rural sector. Vmart Retail is the stock on our radar. We'll get chatting with uh, the management on the other side to tell us whether the rural uh, demand is indeed picking up or not. <laughs> 